You said in here also, the greatest asset you have is your mind. What, what does that mean? Well, because money doesn't exist anymore. Inside fake, I cover the infinite return. When I came back from Vietnam in 73, January of 73, my poor dad said, get your MBA. And my rich dad laughed. He says, you're going you're to turn out to be an employee. Who else hires guys with MBAs? You know what I mean? He, he was just pragmatic about it. He says, if you really want to be a rich, take a class on real estate. And I said, why is that? He says, I didn't know at the time, but once you understand real, real estate is based on debt. And he says, you will learn how to use debt as money, because that's what happened in 71. The US dollar became debt. So once you learn how to use debt as money, you can never say, I can't afford it. So the banks, after the crash of 2008, the banks gave me $300 million tax-free to buy real estate that the idiots had lost. I hate this, and they were idiots because the prices were so high. Why would you buy it at the top of a market? Don't you know that's gonna crash? They all, oh, no, no, this is, you know, that was the subprime, was the derivatives market, the MBSs and all that stuff had driven the price of real estate so high and the rest of us were just waiting. And then when the whole thing came crashing down, all this real estate was now available and they needed, you know, the, the Fed and those guys in the treasury needed guys like us to go in there. So Wall Street gave us hundreds of millions of dollars to mop up all that real estate these guys had lost. Now, it's fair because everybody could do it. So, you know, when I asked the average guy, I said, can you, why don't you use debt? They can't even get a loan because their scores are so bad. So that, that's what's going on in the world today. It's fake money, fake teachers, fake asses. The school teachers will never tell you that because they don't know it. My poor dad never knew that. And he thinks they think the rich are crooks. The rich just play by different laws. The rules are the same, but you have to do what the government wants you to do. My success comes from spirituality, not finance. And what happened was when my wife and I started Rich Dad back in 1996, actually, we left the spirituality out. And then the corporate types came in, you know, the MBAs and the accountants and attorneys, and they tried to make it into a business. And I said, no, that's a very big difference. You see, people say, well, why don't you give the poor money? So the only problem with that is just creates more poor people. You give a man a fish, you get a lot of people who want more fish, you know? Well, you teach them to fish. But, you know, unfortunately the poor, as was in the Bible, I'm not real religious, the poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. When they say, I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. My PhD dad, he says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it. I can't do that. I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape. You know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I can't go to the gym. How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take? Or why should I do that? A question opens a mind. A statement closes the mind. See, when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down and you become what you say. I don't think God wants people to be poor. And today in the world, America especially, you know, is this gap between the rich and everybody else. And I know the game of the rich. You know, my, my rich dad taught me the game the bankers and the rich play is different than what they teach you in school. And that's the story of rich dad, poor dad. You know, my poor dad, PhD, stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. They don't know anything about money. And he's teach, they're teaching our kids. And my rich dad was an entrepreneur who never finished school. So all of the pieces of the puzzle, and when Fuller scolded me back in 83, the pieces of the puzzle and my life started to come together. And I understood what he was saying then. You know, he says, well, maybe we should stop ripping people off. <laughs> you know, it might be a good thing. And you know, a question I ask all over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. 
And that's not a mistake. That's not an accident. I knew that, most people know that. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. So if you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, which came out in 1997, it's what the rich teach their kids about money, the poor and middle class do not. You know, people say, well, money is not that important to me. Then if money is not that important to you, money is not important to you. I mean, they, you know what I mean? I don't care about money. The money doesn't care about you. You know, it, the word does become flesh. Or oh, I'll never be rich. Or the favorite one is the rich are greedy. It's the poor that are greedy. You know, if you think about it, because to be rich, you have to give something. I have to produce books and games, and I, I purchase real estate, I provide housing, provide jobs and all that. That's why I'm rich. But greedy people produce nothing. Oh, no, it's the rich that are greedy. And I'm going, hey, sports fans, you know, you point a finger forward, three are pointing back. There's a big attitude problem against the rich today. I love this. I think it's the best thing going better than sliced bread. But if you're not smart with it, it's like a loaded gun, you know, you can protect yourself or can kill yourself with it. So real estate is, to me, the best vehicle, but you've got to be smart with it because we're using debt. And debt is a two-edged sword out there. So you use debt, I use debt, but the more debt you use, actually you have to be smarter. So you can use debt to get richer, you can also use debt to wipe you out. So that's why, you know, I continue on saying we need financial education to just say to somebody, get out of debt. Well, that's not accurate. And I think when you say to somebody, live below your means, you wipe their spirit out. It's like saying to somebody, if you want to lose weight, go on a starvation diet. It doesn't make you healthier to starve yourself. So I would rather get financially educated. That's why I read, read your books, because I want to, this is my greatest asset. I want to feed my brain so that I can expand my means without getting into excessive debt or where I start to lose. Because debt, you could say, is a two-edged sword. But telling somebody to live below your means is almost inhumane. I never felt good doing it. I wanted to strive to do better every day. I want to do better every day. I liked a good life. Whatever makes you feel better about yourself, stronger, more confident, to want to do better, and I think really that's the issue. And we're at the stage of our lives right now, we, you know, to ask for more is not really it, but to do better, to feel better about ourselves is still important. It is very important.